Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because I have the new Izumea Wildstar collection. So this is actually only available for pre-order right now, but they did a pop-up uh, for three days in LA last weekend and I have a lot of friends in LA because I go down there a lot, um, but couldn't go down there for that weekend suddenly. But I did ask a friend to go pick it up for me and send it to me. So I have the palette, the highlighter, one of the lip sticks, one of the lip liners, the matching set, and the new mascara. So I'm going to do swatches, a look, first impression, and give you some thoughts uh, on what I think about it, especially compared to the first palette. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do multiple looks or a really long video because I'm getting over a cold and I lost my voice all week and it only came back yesterday. So I don't want to push it, so I'll probably do like a more looks and thorough actual review in the next week or so, um, but I wanted to get a first impression. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I am a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a soft spot for any makeup and colorful makeup, and I have new content every week, so I'd love to have you subscribe. Okay, so I was originally going to wait to buy this. Um, I did get the original industrial palette and a couple other pieces from this collection. Um, and I've been really liking these, really, really loving them and still need to film a video about these. I was going to do that this week, but then I lost my voice. There was like four videos I had listed out ready to do. Um, but, uh, and I was going to wait for a sale or wait to see what other people thought of this. But then when I saw that they were doing the pop-up in LA and one of them was right by our, where one of our friends lives um, in Silver Lake, I was like, can you please just go get these? I think it's worth jumping on it now so that I can get a review out uh, while they're still for pre-order and show people what it looks like. Um, so I did that and um, they mailed them to me and they came in last night and I cannot wait to try these out. I haven't really touched anything yet. Um, except for the highlighter. The highlighter does have alfalfa extract in it and I've had some allergic reactions to a lot of haze and alfalfas and things like that so I wanted to make sure I wasn't allergic to that so I did a patch test on my wrist last night for a good hour or so and then on my face just to make sure I didn't have you know, a reaction at all. I am ex extra sad that I couldn't go because Izumea was actually there doing people's makeup and it would have been really cool to see things in person, maybe meet her, um, maybe have one of them, her makeup artist, do my makeup. But I was just in LA, couldn't afford to go back down. <laughs> um, so I'm very thankful that my friend was able to go by and grab these things. Um, everything came very well packaged. Um, it wasn't even packaged to ship, but he put it in bubble wrap in a box. And the way they had it, was everything was in a bunch of tissue paper and in little velvet pouches. So he didn't even need to add in extra packaging really other than the bubble wrap he wrapped everything in. Um, so now we have three little velvet pouches as well. Um, one had the lip products in it, one had the mascara and the highlighter and one had the palette. Um, I wasn't gonna buy the highlighter, but they upsold him on the collection set and so he just bought that. Um, so this is the Wild Star palette. This does retail for $100, I think $105. It is a little cheaper than the Industrial palette, which was $115. Um, and it is, you know, a decently sized palette, but a very different shape and different vibe. So I know a lot of people were really thrown off by this new collection. I really like it. I think it's very camp which I appreciate. Uh, she did say the inspiration was kitsch glamour, and it very much is that. It is glamorous, kitsch, camp, and I'm here for it. Um, the first collection also I would say is pretty campy too. I mean, it's industrial, leather, latex, fetish, but it's still very over the top, very, uh, just very camp. I feel like that's the brand, and I feel like they're gonna be making a lot of big swings between collections. Um, so I'm really excited to see where they go. I will be filming a full review on this palette probably this week now that I have a voice again. 
um, because it is still available if you were interested in it. Um, but I do really like it enough that I went ahead and got this. I did get this on sale though. I really appreciate the the vibe of the brand and that she's really just going all in on the theme. Like she picks a theme, she goes all in. The ad campaigns, the components, everything is just over the top, all in. And I really, I really like that. Um, so uh, this is the palette, this is the Wildstar palette. I love that the horse has a red eye. It makes me think of the, the demon horse from like the Denver airport. Um, and then the back has the shades. I do like that this is really grungy and this is a little bit more quote unquote wearable, daily friendly shades, um, but we'll see what they look like. They all look pretty shifty when I looked at this last night. Um, it does have the shades on the back. There is one thing that I don't love. So there's one shade that says it is not safe for the use around the eyes. It's a pigment um, and I have a feeling that's because of a, the red color in it, but there's actually it says the shade Mare, but there's two spots on here that say they're the shade Mare, so there might be a typo there. Um, it also came with uh, a bunch of postcards about each thing. So each of these has the ingredient, the net weight, that they're vegan. So this is the Lash Wrap Mascara Dead of Night, Lash Lasso. This is the one for the palette. Um, and if you look at Mare, it says Mare is not intended for use around the eye area. And then when you look in the ingredients, there's red. So there's red 28 and red seven. I'm not sure which one of those is the culprit, but it's the only shade with uh, a red dye in it. So I think it's the vegan red dye, which if you're around any makeup a lot, that happens a lot. To not use Carmine, which is from Beatles and where a lot of red pigments come from, they use vegan red dyes, which the FDA hasn't approved for the eye area. The FDA hasn't tested and said, no, you can't. They just haven't approved it. So, um, but a lot of the time they are approved in the EU, which, and they're a, a British brand. So I think that's, you know, also why there's all of that, the labels, um, cause they legally have to here. And then there's like Europe information and United States. So I think I'm going to do some swatches of the palette and then I'm going to try out the lip and the highlighter, and then I'll use the mascara at the end. Um, and if you're curious about makeup, I'll have it all in the description box and timestamps, all of that. Uh, I just did what I normally do, which is I have the House Labs foundation brush and I do like it, but generally what I use is this little fluffy brush and I just use foundation around my nose and where I have a lot of redness. And then I do concealer here and a little bit of concealer, you know, around my jawline. Um, because I don't feel like I need to cover my entire face with product um, on a day-to-day. -day. And then I did a little bit of bronzer and blush and brow gel, clear brow gel. So this is the palette, it's very shiny. It's pretty heavy, it's not as heavy as the industrial palette. Um, they're both made out of plastic, but that feels a little more weighted than this does, but it does feel nice in the hand, um, but it is plastic, not metal. Um, it has the shade names here, and then when you open it up, you've got a big mirror here, which I will take the sticker off when I go to use it. And then here is the actual color story. A lot of people said that they've seen Tarte and other brands do this kind of circular thing. I don't care. Um, I'm not like a stan where I, I'm going to be blindly praise anything, but I don't think pan shape and pan design is something that really matters. Um, I think it works with the vibe of this. It looks like a big belt buckle, really goes with the theme. Most brands use rectangles or squares and there's not really not that much variation. So I don't think it really matters that much uh, if a brand has done something before. I'd rather have something like this where it's compact than something with a bunch of blank space, which I have seen. Um, so it looks like this has four mats. It has a light beige matte, a medium brown, a dark brown, and a black, and then shimmers. And the shimmers all look very shifty. I don't know if that'll come on camera, but you can see this is like white to gold and peach. There's like gold and this pink here. Um, so it does look, this brown has some gold in it. It does look really interesting. 
I have a feeling Mare is this really bright pink, um, because when I look at the shades, the two that have that are like here and here, and I, that doesn't have red in it, neither does that. So I'm pretty sure this is Mare, and this is the one that they say has the eye safety warning. Um, I don't have any primer down, I do have an olive undertone, so sometimes blues mostly, and greens and yellows can kind of look a little different on me, but I don't think I should have to worry about any of these. So I'm gonna do the mattes and then we'll do the shimmers. So this is the beige matte. It's just a standard beige, but it does feel really nice. And then the brown, no caramel brown. And then we've got the dark brown. And then the big shade is a black. So there are the four mattes, kind of your standard mattes. They're nice to have, but not the reason to buy a palette. Um, so the base is just, it's an okay highlight shade for me. That looks like it'll be a good transition shade. That's a nice brown. That's a nice black. I don't really worry about how the swatches are in far, as far as performance. They don't tell me how it's gonna perform on the eye, but they do tell me the color so and how it's going to look on my skin um so now i'm just going to go around so let's do this gold and i do know some people had hard pan issues with their first palette um i haven't had any issues so we'll see what about this one that's part of why i want to do like a full week of trying it do multiple looks and do a full review later so i can give you updates on that kind of stuff um here's the pink and then here's this really beautiful iridescent shade. So this is a really pretty gold. It's kind of a, it might be a duochrome. Um, this is a really pretty magenta. And then this iridescent shade is beautiful. It looks kind of like light year from Terra Moons. Okay, so here are these three. These look really beautiful. Like I said, this looks like light year from uh, Terra Moons. It's a pretty magenta. Um, these feel a little different from the shades in the other palette, so it's not exactly the same formula, I don't think. So there's the sparkly gold. That's really beautiful. It has really fine milled sparkle. Like, it is exceptionally sparkly. And then here's that magenta that has a really nice gold sparkle running through it. And then here's that more iridescent shade. That could be a fun highlighter too. Um, there's definitely a bit of green, gold, peach running through it. It's really pretty. It's definitely kind of shade that I have as singles, but not really in palettes very often. I mean, you can see it is definitely a little textured. Um, then there's this blue shade that looks really pretty. And I'm doing pretty light swatches. This definitely has uh, maybe some gold in it. This, like, dark brown bronze. That's really beautiful. That's a perfect one-and-done shade. And then this one looks like a pink, like a peach gold. Oh, that's really beautiful. Wow. Um, that looks like... It's, it's like peachy pink, and then there's a really strong gold shift. That's really pretty. So baby blue with some silver sparkle, silver and gold, I think. And that is just like a chocolate brown with like bronze running through it. And then that is very intense. So when I'm looking in my uh, camera, I'm seeing like pink with a bit of peach right here. And then when I look here, I see bronze, yellow, and like peach speckles. So it's definitely very shifty, multi-chromey. So these two both seem like multi-chromes. And then the last two shades are this pink gold duochrome and this purple. The purple feels a little thicker. Um, that's really pretty. The purple definitely feels a little thicker, um, more binding agent to it. 
and it's just a pink gold duochrome pretty strong gold shift that's pretty and then this is a lavender shade um with pink running through it it's a little more sheer i do like that she does a lot of different textures i think in the last palette there were 12 shades and 12 or 14 and they're like 10 of them are different formulas so i really appreciate the different textures in here so this is it all swatched out i'm gonna go wash this off and try out the products on my actual face so i went and grabbed my husband's phone since i filmed with mine so i could show you in the light so you could see the sparkle a little bit better so you can see how sparkly those are this one's much more smooth but still has micro sparkle and these are very sparkly very twinkly so now to go wash these off. Okay, so now that the swatches are done, I'm going to put on the highlighter and then try out the eyeshadows. So, so this is the Dazzle Up Highlighter in Sun Chaser. Um, it is made in Italy like the other products. It has five grams product, 18 month shelf life. I believe this was $40, which is part of why I was like, not gonna buy it because if I was allergic to it, that'd be a waste of $42, but my friend bought it and it seems okay so far, so fingers crossed. Um, it has a horse on it just like the other stuff. This has a green, like an emerald green eye and then gold on it. It feels nice in the hand, um, pretty big. I have big hands, I am 6'2 and have very large hands, so this is a large component. Um, and then it pops off and then here is the highlighter. So I have already used this, like I said, I did a patch test on my wrist and then a little bit on my face and I didn't have any reaction. So if you are like me and have issues with alfalfa, so far so good. <laughs> um, on my wrist, it just kind of gave a wet look with lots of sparkle. And on my face, it just gave a very intense wet look. So I wanna see how it looks today. It does feel like a balm. Um, it feels, I don't know how to describe this. It feels like if you've put on <laughs> like the the icy hot that comes in a tube like this that you can roll on so it's supposed to be like less mess it kind of feels like you're putting that on um but without the weird feeling of icy hot and not goopy but i'm just gonna put that right here so i don't know if this will show up on camera um i'll put it on the back of my hand as well but you can see the color there um it doesn't really have too much of a color I would say on my face, putting it there, it definitely adds a wet look. I did set my face and she says that you can blend it in with your finger. It does, it just adds a really wet looking highlight. It's not disturbing my foundation or my blush and it's, got enough of a transparent base that it's just kind of melting in so that's really nice and I'll put it on the back of my hand as well so you can kind of see it not on my face so you can see it's just very blindingly wet it just looks wet there in person it's very bright and in person I see a lot of gold and peach like sparkle, um, really pretty, tiny micro sparkles. I don't really see them on the face, but I do when I put it on my hand or like on my wrist. Um, and then I even used a flashlight. I'll try to insert a video um, last night and it didn't look sparkly on my face. It just looked really wet uh, and really beautiful. And then on my wrist, it looked sparkly, so. I'll leave this here, see how it dries down. And then let's go into the palette and I'll put my lip on at the end. So you can do a look two ways. You can start with the mattes, you can start with the shimmers. I really want to try this multi-chrome here. I feel like if I was using this shade uh, because it's so creamy, I could just put it out there and blend the edges. But I feel like this shade is a little flakier, so I don't know if I want to just blend the edges. So I'm going to start with a matte just to see. So 
So this is a rougher one brush, and I'm gonna go into the mid-tone mat here. And I picked the sticker off. It is a very nice quality mirror. And I have my Urban Decay eye primer down. So that was just one little dip. So let's see how this performs. This is her first time releasing mattes under her own brand. Obviously she's worked with Byredo and stuff and Tom Ford. So let's see how her mattes as her own brand compare. So I'm just tapping where I want the darkest amount, like normal, and then blending in. If I was using uh, a nice one and done shade like this, I would probably just put this down and then blend the edges with the mat, but. And I will experiment with different techniques over the week and give you an update when I film my full review, probably next weekend. I can do some comparisons if you want, so leave questions and comparison requests and stuff in the comments and if I have things to compare it to that you ask I will do that when I film my full review. So that is a really nice blendable mat. It's blending out really nicely. It's a perfect transition shade for me. It's not sticking or patchy or anything. I'm gonna grab a small fluffy brush. This is stained purple. Um, but I've wiped it off on a microfiber, so it doesn't have any actual shadow on it. Picking up a little bit of the dark brown. There's not really any clear up in the pan, and there's not really any coming off when I tap either. And I'm just going to place that here. So this seems pigmented, but not like overly pigmented. So hopefully they layer nicely so that they're adjustable for different skin tones. That's my preference in a matte is pigmented, but like buildable. So you can shear it out or really build it up so that anybody from someone super pale to someone dark can use it. Really pretty dark brown. It's kind of a warm brown with a bit of, I don't know. It's just like a chocolate brown, I guess. And that blended effortlessly. Sometimes I get a little bit of stripey patchiness right here when I'm blending a darker matte, but nothing. So those seem like really nice quality mattes. Okay, so I added a little bit more just to see how much I could build it. I could probably keep building it, but I'm going to stop there. Looks really nice, decently smoky. If you want to go really smoky, you do have a black, so I'm going to try that out. It's a pencil brush. I'm just going to tap it right here. Seems pretty pigmented. Yeah, this seems like a really nice matte. It's blending onto my lash line really nicely. And then I'm just going to take the, fl the small fl fluffy brush I used and blend it into the dark brown. Okay, so these are really nice. I really like this matte formula so far. I'm just going to take the same brown shades and run them under my lash line a little bit. So that looks really nice. So let's try out the shimmer. So I'm gonna try, I think this one, this one, and maybe this one, we'll see. Maybe I'll put one of the pinks on the lower lash line. So I wanna try the dark kind of chocolate brown bronze and put it out here just to see how it blends into the crease out here, how it blends into the dark mats. It does feel really creamy Really nice if you've used, you know, like Pat McGrath shimmers, that kind of shimmer. It does have a lot of little gold sparkle in it, but it does seem to blend out nicely. So in person, it kind of looks like I just took this shade, this dark matte and blended it all over, but with that gold sparkle. So if you use this to blend into your crease, you might have some gold sparkle, but it is one of those shades you can do that with. Okay. So now I'm gonna go into this shade here, which I think is the shade Spur. I think that one was Chaps, and I think this one is Spur. So let's grab that on a rougher brush. Picks up nicely. And I'm gonna put that all over. I could use glittery glue, you can use your finger if you want it more intense. 
but I want to build it up with a brush and see how it works. It is definitely a little flaky. You can see there's a little bit of texture there, but it's not creating any fallout, which I appreciate. Very sparkly. Like, I think this is similar to, I have a shade from Kaleidos that's similar, and then Divina Tucana, that kind of like, that kind of shift, um, but I will definitely do comparisons in the full review, but that looks really, really beautiful. I hope I can capture how sparkly that is. Let me try a little bit with my fingers just to see. Yeah, you definitely get more opaque metallic effect uh, with your finger. Really like that. Um, I'm gonna take, I think I'm gonna do this one on the inner corner. I'm gonna take a little bit of this gold and lightly tap over. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Just add a little bit of extra gold sparkle. And for how much sparkle I have up here, I have none down here, which is really nice. And if you want to avoid fallout completely or make sure you don't get sparkle, I would do your eyes first or use a glitter glue or something. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the, the shade, which I think is Whoa. Um, and I'm going to put that on the inner corner. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't think the camera's gonna do it justice. It's so pretty. It's so sparkly, and even in the inner corner, I can see the shift. And this highlighter is just kind of melted in, and I just have that like glow from within. So, really, really like the eye look. I mean, it's neutral colors, but these are the kind of neutrals I really like. Either I want like a murky green or something like this as a day-to-day -day look. So I'm happy about that. I do really want to try out the purples and pinks, but I'll do those in the in the other video. And the blue, blue is my favorite color. Actually, let's take a different pencil brush and pick up the blue. And run a little bit down here. That's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this on the other eye, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I copied it on the other eye. Worked really well. No issues so far. Um, I'm going to try the mascara now, and then I'll do the lip. Um, so this is the Robber Lash from last time. This is the new Lash Lasso. Standard mascara size. Um, I do really like when I like the look of this, but also I really like the formula and the wand. The wand is really nice. I don't find it self-curling like they say it will, but it does hold my curl pretty well. I have really straight lashes for having such curly hair. Very straight lashes. This has a different wand. I don't know what the formula is. She did say this is supposed to be more volumizing versus length and curl. Um, and it definitely has a different wand. I did comment on something asking if it was the same formula and they did, Isamea liked my comment. So I don't know if that's saying, yes, it's the same formula, but different wand to give it a different effect or what, I don't know. Um, so that's my assumption going forward. Um, so I'm gonna curl my lashes and try this out. So far it looks nice. It looks pretty much the same as the other mascara. A little, maybe a little bit more. There's more bristles here, so I think I'm getting a little more product. But I'm still getting length. And I'm still getting uh, volume as well. So it looks really nice to me. Okay, so, so far I really like the mascara. I think it's maybe the same formula. I think it is just a different brush for a different kind of application. Um, but I really like it. It gives volume and uh, length and curl without being clumpy. I hate a clumpy lash. Um, and this is one layer, so you could definitely build it up and have more intense lashes, but this is, I normally only do one layer of mascara. 
So, so far, really like this as well. And now for the lip. So there are three colors. There is a, a brown color, a pink, and then this one. This one looked more brick. So this is the shade, this is the Lucky Kiss Diamond Lip Glow in Outlaw. And I have the same color in the lip liner. Um, and this is the one that spoke to me the most, although I really like all three colors. And if they weren't $50, I would buy all three. Um, especially the more pinky coral one looks really beautiful. So it's got the red eyed horse, a little more orangey red as well, pops up. And then this is the lipstick. It's really beautiful, like shimmery, metallic, opalescent kind of brick copper. So I'm excited to see how it looks on the lips. 50 seems like a lot for a lipstick, but the component and everything, I'm not surprised. Um, that's why I was gonna wait for a sale. And if there is a sale later, I might pick up the other colors. We'll see. Um, and then this is the Spur Stick Suede Lip Liner, also an outlaw, also made in Italy, um, all of that. Feels really nice. The twist looks like. So let's try the lip liner out. Um, all I've had on is my House Labs lip oil. So let's try this. I'm picky. Oh, it's pigmented. I'm picky about lip liners. I find they can be too creamier and then too creamy and then they just move. Um, and they don't really serve a purpose. And then sometimes they're dry and they just hurt my lips. So we'll see. I feel like especially drugstore lip liners tend to be either too dry or too creamy and not in the middle. Um, my favorite so far has been the House Ops ones from their previous uh, launch. So this does feel very creamy. And it's a nice brown color. Like a red brown. I kind of overline my lips mostly just because the color stops there, but the actual lip line is down here. I have that where the, the color doesn't go all the way to the edge of my lip line. Okay, very creamy. I just broke the tip off. So I like the color and then I tend to use my finger or a little brush and diffuse it down into my lip. There doesn't seem to be any sparkle in the lip liner. It seems to be just kind of a solid color. And now to try the lip. This looks like a really nice bold statement neutral. So let's see how this feels. Feels very creamy, feels really nice like firm, but not stiff or like firm where it's gonna drag. It feels creamy, but firm. I don't normally do my lips on camera, so this feels weird. I really like that. It's not as gold metallic as it looks like it's gonna be in the tube. There is a bit of gold and there's a sheen, but it's not like overly metallic. I've used metallic lips where it just makes your lips look like metal, which is fun for the right occasion. This feels like a quote unquote wearable version of that. So that feels really nice. Feels very hydrating and it looks in person really nice kind of a bricky brown, and there is like a gold wet sheen, but not like sparkle or metallic shift or anything. And I'll do a little swatch on the back of my hand. So you can see the lip liner is a little darker than, darker than the lipstick. And that's kind of a sheer swatch of the lipstick, obviously, compared to my lips. But you can kind of see the color there. There's gold and pink sparkle in it but again like on my hand I see lots of gold sparkle but on my lips I'm not seeing sparkle like I don't have a glittery lip and I do own glittery lipsticks okay I can kind of if I like 
eh, if I make like an awkward face, I can see the sparkle. But on the actual lips, it just gives that wet, shiny effect. And it's not a matte, so I don't expect it to be transfer proof, but it does look really nice. So I'm very impressed so far. I really like the way everything performed. It looks really nice. Uh, like I said, I will keep playing with this throughout the week. I will film, hopefully, at least another look or two. I'll at least take some pictures and stuff so I can insert them when I review it. And like I said, if there's anything you want me to directly compare shades to, let me know in the comments below so I can plan ahead and do swatch comparisons. Um, and I will compare it to the industrial palette and all of that um, later as well. So, but so far for a first impression, I am very happy with my purchase. I think it's really beautiful and really unique and yeah, it's expensive, but really happy with it. So, so let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Is this something you picked up? Are you thinking of waiting for a sale? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.